today we are going to build a catapult. That's right, we're going to build a vehicle that can travel to a certain spot and then flick a ball into the bin. The goal is to not just get it in the bin, but to do it quicker than anyone else. Can you build the fastest robot to get the ball in the bin? Here's some rules and tips. So let's start coding this catapult. Uh, you need to set the movement motors first. So we need to grab the block that says set movement motors to A and B. Some of you will know that I always like to plug my motors into C and D. So I'm going to change mine to C and D. It doesn't matter which port you really do, um, as long as it's consistent with what you've built. And then after that we're going to set a speed, because you might want to adjust the speed later. 50% is alright. You can change it to whatever you like there. Then we're going to start moving. Um, we're going to move forward just a little bit first. Um, it depends on the size of your course and everything. But let's just say I'm going to move forward for four rotations, which means the wheels will spin around four times and I'll probably move about 60, 70 centimeters. And then we're going to make it turn. So depending on your course again, you might want it to turn left or right. On my course, I'm going to turn left and I'm going to turn pretty on a pretty wide arc. So I'm going to just leave it on about 30. 
and I'm just going to turn for two rotations and that that gives you almost a right angle with my particular robot it always depends on what sort of robot you've built how far apart your wheels are and that sort of thing now after it goes um, turns after it turns for two rotations we're going to go forward again to get across that line so we might go forward for another four rotations and that might get you across the second line you've got to shoot the ball after you pass the second line so anywhere past the second line is good it's good not to be too close to the target now this is where we want it to shoot and we're going to use um, a motor plugged into port A so I think the best idea is to grab that top block again and you'll have to experiment with this because it depends again how you built it so you might want to turn it that way or the other way depending how you built your catapult I found that even just 0 0.2 of rotation is enough to shoot the catapult you don't need the whole arm to spin all the way around and 0.2 is about 20% isn't it? So it's about one fifth of a turn and that's usually enough to get the catapult to shoot enough. Again you might want to play with that number later. You might make it 0.3 or even 0.1 or even 0.15 or something later on. You can experiment with that. Um, it comes down to your construction of how far you want it to actually flick the ball. And then I've added another block which um, at the end it's going to put it back to the starting position so I've used this block that says uh, A go to the shortest path to position now on my actual robot when I turn it on and connect I'm just going to connect now up the top here you can see if you click on the word uh, where it normally says connect with this green tick is up the top you can see uh, if I move the arm up and down you can see in motor A you can see there that it changes now my ideal position for starting happens to be about there so on my screen there it says 320 degrees and when it flicks it it'll go up back like this but then I want it to go back to 320 degrees or 319 degrees so in my code here Whenever it starts, I'm always going to say go back to 320 degrees. Okay. Look down the bottom right, it's updating the hub. It's because I haven't used this actual iPad with this hub before. If you want to stop that from happening, use the same iPad with the same hub every time. So I reckon that code will work now. It's going to it's going to go forwards at a speed of 60 for four rotations, and it's going to turn a little bit to the left. Then it's going to go forward again for another four rotations and then the arm's going to flick and then go back to its starting position. My robot's a little bit off balance so it might tip over sometimes but um, yeah, yours won't because you'll make it better than mine. I don't want to give away too much when I'm showing you how to make a robot. Anyway, that should work and now it's time to pause the screen so that you can see the rules again and I can explain to the teacher how to set this thing up. So the teacher setup for this one's very easy. You just need two pieces of tape on the floor. The one that's already there is the one that the robot crosses before it shoots. This is the start line that I put down here. So the robot can start behind um, a line that's perpendicular to the other line and it can be as far apart as you like. You can make it as challenging as you want, but it doesn't have to be too far to be challenging and once it goes over that line it's going to turn left and then cross the second line and when it crosses that second line it's going to shoot a ball you can use any ball you like uh, i've got a few different types of balls there but i i used this yellow one i thought that was a good size and weight but any ball should be all right you can shoot into a container or you can shoot into a bucket or even a cone um, or even a garbage bin whatever you want you can have as a target afterwards so that's it for the setup it's pretty straightforward with all my lessons in the description, you'll find some resources that you can use to score events, even things like knockouts or measuring times and distances and stuff. There's also some student assessment, self-assessment sheets and some other assessment tools like this one, which is a worksheet where teachers can fill in a score for each kid during the lesson. If you enjoy my videos, why not give me a small donation by pressing the thanks button at the bottom of every video. You can tap thanks and give me a donation 
Or you could even become a member by joining my channel and become an official Robot Man fan, just like these guys. I've also got some videos that you might like to see, some other lessons and a playlist of all my Spike Prime tricks. Check them out.